Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different's World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all it's surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And so when I drop content, you guys come to Different's World and you come to learn about your girl. And speaking of coming to learn about your girl, I'm an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, content creator, small business owner, you know, CEO of Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and motivate all at once. <laughs> you got the little backwards. But in any case, again, so first, second, third time or more, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So we got a high one for you guys on Wednesdays. You know, we drop our podcast interview. I know I'm a little behind in dropping it. But in any case, I'm excited because I'll be bringing you guys my collaboration uh, with the lovely Miss Terry Vincent of the uh, adult just, uh, excuse me, the Adult Child of Dysfunction, Thriving in Chaos podcast, and I had a really good time talking with her about, you know, my my story, how I came up and, you know, overcome, you know, homelessness and foster care to traveling all over the world. I had such a great time with her sharing my story and, you know, letting her pick my brain and, you know, offering my advice and testimony to people out there willing to listen. And so without further ado with me, yip yapping and jaw jacking, you guys, check out my audio interview and, uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it, and then we'll go from there about what's going on in Different Well, Yeah, here it is. We have here our good friend, Different. She is an author, motivational speaker, travel influencer, a content creator, and a small business owner. Today, we're going to talk about the topic of overcoming homelessness and foster care, and moving on to be someone who travels all across the world. Good morning, Different. Welcome. Good morning, Tammy. Thank you so much for having me. Hello to everybody out there listening and watching. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T, and that's different. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me on the show and being able to share my story and testimony in hopes of inspiring and encouraging and motivating others who may be going through the same thing or have went through the same thing. And so, so happy and, and honored to be here. Yeah, well, let's do it. Yeah, super happy to have you here. And that's really what this podcast is about because the podcast, as you know, is called Adult Child of Dysfunction. And we all have dysfunctions in our lives. We all go through stuff, but everybody's story is different. My story was two alcoholic parents of drug abuse of mother, of you know physical, sexual, emotional abuse, all of that good stuff that's wrapped in living with an addict. Now, that's not your story or it may be part of your story, but what really stuck out to me was just the fact about the homelessness and the foster care because that is something that so many people experience and yeah. i can't help them with it i don't know what to tell them i don't know where to steer them i don't know tips tricks strategies I, nothing because i've unfortunately i mean fortunately and unfortunately never experienced that so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about your story well okay well giving you a current uh, a backdrop i'm 32 i'm from houston um some of my hobbies are, you know, I'm a daredevil, I'm Sagittarius, so I love doing anything adventurous and, of course, traveling all over the world. But uh, giving you guys some background on who I am, um, I had a pretty good childhood until the time I was around 11, and then uh, things happened in where me and my family, we ended up homeless on the streets for three years, and to where we lived everywhere from pillow to post, even, you know, at, at bus stops, car, uh, sleeping in cars, shelters, you know, at parks, strangers' houses, even at one point, I slept at a crack house. And it was like that for me for three years. And uh, it wasn't until I was the age of 14 when a family member secretly placed me in foster care. So none of my other families knew where I was or what happened to me uh, for six months. <clears throat> and so while I was in the system, you know, the first six months, I tried my hardest to come home. But mind you, this is in 2005. So right before uh, iPod and Apple took over, uh, we still had LimeWire and Netgear, if you remember them. <laughs> and so that's just to put you where, where I was um, at the time. I, however, I found out from a former, another foster kid that if you stayed in and aged out, 
in the state of Texas would pay for your tuition to college, your four year tuition to college. And so right there, a light bulb went up in my head, Tammy, and I just thought, man, let me use my street smarts to elevate my foot smarts. You know, going through what I was going through at the time, from the age 11 to 14, I saw things that, you know, a little girl should never have to see, but then, you know, had to grow up and learn and adapt and adjust to the environment that she was around. And so when I seen that opportunity, you know, to, to stay in, in an environment that wasn't as, as much better because it was, you know, going through, it was a tough situation being in foster care and so it was a lot better than what I had at that time. And so I just made that decision to stay. And I spent the next four years, you know, being shuffled in the system. Uh, when you're in foster care, you don't have a name, you have a case number. And so it was like that for me, uh, going from different foster homes, by the time I graduated, I think I had been through like, I know over a dozen high school, a dozen schools in itself. Uh, so I had like over a dozen personalities, if you will. When you think about foster care, uh, it makes you feel ashamed and embarrassed the way you come from. You feel like you have to lie about it and create different personalities and different stories and situations and make up excuses as to why that person is living with you, but you don't look alike. Oh, that's not, that's my little cousin. Oh, that's my adopted sister. Oh, we're adopted. You know, you just you don't want to tell people you're in foster care because once they hear that, they get to feeling sorry for you and asking questions and automatically thinking, well, you know, you were abused, you were this, you were that, you were a problem child. And then that may be the case, but you don't want to be, you know, pegged as that. So you just you keep that to yourself. And so that's just what I did. However, uh, well, let me say this. Just let's, let me just go through the whole story, then I'll, I'll go back and track you. That's what would help me. Um, so when I aged out of foster care, I ended up going to Sam Houston State University, which was a blessing. I uh, had the opportunity to travel the world there. That's when my travel book started. I got the opportunity to study abroad at Kim Young University in South Korea, and I spent four months over there. And right there, that's when my travel book was. I was already, you know, a person um, who, who dreamed about travel as a little kid. I used to say, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to go that place. I didn't know it at the time, but I was manifesting. And so uh, when I grew up and got this opportunity, you know, to study in a whole new culture and a whole new country, uh, that just planted the travel bug for me. And I, within that opportunity, got to travel to eight other countries all over Europe. I went to Japan, I went to China. Uh, and so uh, when I came back, I had started my student or, uh, organization title Pay It Forward. And in that segment, uh, there will be a part about education where we go to different high schools and speaking to students on the importance of education. And with me sharing my testimony and feeling comfortable and tell, finally telling people, hey, I was in foster care and I'm aged out, look at me. Uh, at, towards the end of those little you know, meetings and speeches, kids will come up to me and tell me, well, hey, I didn't know the state of Texas would pay for my tuition if I was in foster care. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to college now. And so right there, that's where my motivational, you know, speaking book was planted, where I just realized I had a story to share and I needed to share it to help others that were going through what I was going through. And so fast forward to when I graduate, I get my bachelor's degree in international business, I have two minors in economics and business communication. A few years later, I ended up getting my master's degree in entrepreneurship. Wow, you're a busy lady. I'm a busy woman. Yes, I'm a woman with many hats, I like to say. But with that being said, Tammy, all those accomplishments and not just under my belt, it doesn't mean a damn thing if I didn't have, uh, you know, if I was still dealing with trauma and issues from my childhood and that, that carried over into my adulthood, which is what happened to me. You know, well, abs absolutely. And I have, I do have a couple questions going kind of all the way back to the beginning. So you said that an aunt took you and unbeknownst to your your parents or were you living with mom and dad when you were homeless at this point or um so i, I, I specifically i don't i don't like to detail who did what okay okay and so i just say a family member that, that's who that okay who was a family member that at the time you know were homeless and living it looks close and again staying with people at the time you know family member that i was staying with uh got tired of me being there and wanted to, you know, live their life. And so, okay. I was actually just more curious if you had siblings. Like, I do. I do. Okay. That, that was would, really my main yeah. question. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, my, 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 my other sibling, that they went down a different path than I did. And so it, it was, you know, at that point in time, it was just me. I was in that situation by myself and kind of had to go through it by myself. But in the end, 
you know, as an adult, we all came back together, you know, when we make happy family. We're not a perfect family or a happy family, but we still family and we still love each other. And, you know, I forgive any everything that happened in the past. I don't dwell on it or hold on to it. I wouldn't have been able to become the woman that I was or I am today had I instead of, you know, stayed stuck in the past. And that's the part of the reason as to what led me getting my mental health in check or, or you know, finding the space in that ugly truth. Uh, again, like I stated, being put in that chaotic environment and being taken out of it, for me, coming up in it after three years, it became my normal. It was normal for me. And anybody to tell you that they grew up in an abnormal environment, for them, it's normal. And so when I got taken out of that environment and placed into foster care, if you would believe it, although foster care system in itself is not as good pretty as they painted to be. The foster homes that I was placed in now, they weren't very nice. And the people that I placed with happened to be, you know, black educated families that, you know, well off, had nice houses, nice cars, nice homes. And that, you know, this wasn't my normal. <laughs> so for me, I felt that it was too good to be true. And that eventually all good things come to an end. And just so I started getting that notion that I'm going to be the captain of my own ship and I'm going to decide when it's time to sink. And so that's what I would do throughout my, you know, teenage years and throughout high school and college. I was self-sabotage and, you know, become very off-putting and chase people off because I didn't believe that they would stay in my life for, for the right reasons or they were there for the right reasons or they would last as long as I thought or I should have lasted. And so I would just end it all. And so those type of, you know, character traits uh, followed me throughout my adulthood, my young, you know, adulthood to where... I started self-sabotaging career-wise. I had a lot of good opportunities coming my way, but yet it didn't feel like I was worthy of it, you know, didn't deserve it. People were taking pity on me or, you know, it wasn't going to last. <laughs> so there was one meeting I had with a well-connected person, you know, who, can, who, was, who could have took me from the back to the front. However, you know, I let those demons in the back of my head get to me and say, you know, you're not good enough or they just take pity on you, you country, you get up. They're not really, you know, into you like that. And so what I did was I purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth. And from then on, they really didn't want to work with me like that. And so for years, I dwelt on that, that situation and other mistakes that I had made until one day I woke up, you know, almost in my 30s and just had to look myself in that mirror and face that ugly truth that whatever I went through in my past, whatever happened to me as a child, even as a young adult, it may or may not have been my fault. It may, may not have been in my control, but at some point in time as an adult, it's on me, my problem to go and fix. And, and so I just had to face that ugly truth and dismiss that notion that, you know, black people don't do therapy. And I took myself to therapy and in doing so, uh, it led to me getting my mental health, I won't say in check because that's, that's, that's a relative term speaking. It's always going to be an ever going thing to keep it, to maintain your mental health is more like it. There's no, no such thing as keeping it in check because it's always going to go through trials and tribulations and have to face new things. So to maintain my health is what I would like to say. Ab uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, we all deserve that. It doesn't matter who you are. You deserve to be able to. And I love that you made the comment, I'm going to captain my own ship. Because so often people just get sucked up in this victim mentality. And when you're you know, passed around and you're not given that connection. I don't know exactly how many foster homes you are in, but I can only imagine that in that time, five. Okay. So in, in that time, you know, you were 14, so 14 to 18, 14 basically. To 18. Yeah. So five, four and a half, five years. So you're talking a new family, a new group of people, new connections, new getting to know someone every year for those critical critical years, because those are the yeah. years when you could have really, really been thriving and, and dealing. And, mm -hmm. and I, I just love that you had the inner resilience to mm -hmm. just say, no, it's uh, nobody's going to help me. I got to help myself. Because oh, yeah, I learned that at a young age, even at, at 11 years old, it was, you know, do or die, if you will, eat or be eaten. And so I just had to become a person that I never imagined myself being. I if you could believe it, I, I I was a Girl Scout. I did jump rope for heart. And, um, did you win? Hard all the time. I'm very competitive, and I'm going to win. I don't care if it's a spin contest. I will win. <laughs> but um, it, it it was just so to the point. As an 11 year old girl, and mind you, you know I'm 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 naturally shaped. 
and, and looking like a hopefully developed grown woman at a young age and you know having these you know disturbing men or sick men if you will come up to you and ask you inappropriate things and to the point I had a uh, one guy followed me. I had to walk and catch the bus to school because we lived all over. And so catching the bus to school is what I had to do at a young age. I just had to learn to get around the city. And so meeting these weirdos, coming across these weirdos, there was one guy who was like, he was driving his truck and he was following me in the truck and was asking me, you know, hey, baby girl, you need a ride? And, you know, clearly could see that I was a little girl. <laughs> and so I just thought in my mind, and uh, I wasn't going to, you know, be anybody's victim. If anything, if they were going to try to, you know, take me, I was gonna go out swinging. And so what I did was, you know, it was a store, a corner store that I was walking past and I just made a beeline to that corner store. And I couldn't believe it, but you know, I asked to, you know, buy a little switchblade or a little cutter knife and they sold it to me. <laughs> and so uh, from then on, I would just walk to school to and from school and I wouldn't take it into school. I would make sure, you know, I hide it before I go into the school because I wasn't trying to hurt anybody, just protect myself. And so, I, I, this is how I had to walk to school every day until I got into foster care. But even then in foster care, that was a whole nother situation itself, being shuffled to, you know, five different foster homes and two shelters at that, you know, going from school to school. Like I said, I had to develop different characters and different personalities. I had to make up different stories to turn me into an excellent liar, which is something I hated to do because I'm a realist. I'd rather keep it real than lie. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what being in foster care would do to you. But in, in, in essence of whatever, like I said, what, what you went through, even for me, whatever we went through as a child, it may or may not have been our fault. It, it was out of our control. Of course, we, had, we couldn't control what was around us. But as an adult, if you're still dwelling on it, if you can't move on from it, it's holding you back in life, then you have to realize that's a problem that you're going to have to fix on your own or need to attempt to fix uh, or get help with because that person that hurts you, don't expect for them to come back and mend your broken heart it is what it is with them, you know, to them, they're going to feel like the victim and, and, and throw excuses elsewhere. You know, that's just like if you've broken up and that person, you know, who you were in love with broke your heart, they cheated on you. Don't expect for them to mend your broken heart. Trust me, they've moved on to their next victim. So it's on you to mend your broken heart and fix whatever they broke. And with that being said, I just want to take this time to say for anybody out there that may be going through any type of mental health stretch, uh, stress, anguish, or illness, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help. Whatever that may mean to you, talk to with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, going to the gym, even getting on medication if that's the case, mending broken bridges, cutting people off from me, you know, well, do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health maintained and in check and not go off the deep end and possibly take anybody with you. If you know or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988lifeline.org. For those that are outside of the U.S. and that's listening to this awesome podcast, you guys can check out ncounseling.com. That is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, although I am sharing these mental health resources with you, you have to realize that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, not anybody else. Lastly, when it comes to mental health, I want you guys out there to remember and listen that no matter what trial and tribulation that you are going through, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not worth it. Therefore, it's not an option. So don't do it. And uh, that's always my little uh, mental health uh, promotion I like to put out. Wherever I go, I always try to advocate and then push for mental health awareness, awareness, whatever. You know, y'all, just one thing about it, mental health does not discriminate. It doesn't care, you know, whether you're black, white, orange, yellow, man, woman, gay, straight, tall, fat, short, skinny, doesn't matter. Mental health doesn't discriminate. We all have gone through some type of mental anguish in our life that, you know, peaks at us at night, and keeps, keeps us up and, and holds us back. And so you have to realize, you know, when it comes to that, it's the battle of the mind. 
I think Joyce Meyer has a book out about that, <laughs> Battle of the Mind. <laughs> yep. like Battlefield of the Mind. And uh, and then and so you just have to realize, you know, some of the things that, that causes the mental health and, and, and strength and, and stress, excuse me, is what we bring on ourselves. And so that's also what I had to realize. I had to free myself from that mental bondage and that psychological box that whether if somebody else had to put me in it, I put myself in it. That's what going to, you know, talking with a therapist has, has done for me. And I'll also say this, I know it's a lot of people out there that are against going to, you know, or talking with a therapist or, you know, spending all their money to sit on the couch. And I understand, you know, how some may feel, but don't let that be the reason why you don't keep your mental health in check. And that's why it's important to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. If it's too expensive for you to go and talk with somebody, then get online and find some free mental health resources. There are a lot of uh, free uh, uh, therapists out there that will offer their services. It be once or twice, and you may have to move on. But again, do your research and find what works best for you. There are no excuses out there that, that should hold you back when it comes to getting your mental health in check, unless, again, you want to be that way. That's also another thing, another uh, the coin, a side of the coin, if you will. If you know that there's a problem and you don't want to fix it, then it is your fault. You know, something that's been aching at you for, for decades and people have been encouraging to go talk about it and go get help and you don't want to, and you and you know that you need to, then it is your fault. Whatever you're going through, whatever stress and pain that is being caused on you, you have to know that you are a part of it. If you don't want to be a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. And, and so, I think that's, I think in all healing journeys, that is one of the biggest problems is being able to self-reflect and being able to take our part in what happened and take our account ac accountability for our part in the journey and what we did. And, you know, you said you, you've been working on this. You obviously were a very resilient person. I was kind of, I wasn't giggling, but I was thinking about that. You know, you're getting the little switchblade because I remember I was kind of the same way I, I, my parents weren't around and I can remember walking mm -hmm. home. I used to take tap lessons and I had the tap shoes with the big heels oh. and I can <laughs> remember being like 10 years old. And walking home and I would have them gripped by the front of the shoe because I just, I was like, okay, if anybody ever got me, I know, like, I'm like, I watch movies. I know that heel will go right there. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I was ready. Like I was, yeah. I was like, what, four foot tall, you know, but I was like, nah, yeah. if same yeah, exactly. thing, you were always ready, you're prepared. Yeah. And, you know, it, it gave you some very good skills of resilience and adaptability and, you know, survival and everything else. But it also, like you said, it, you know, your body is in, how many years did you spend in a hyper aroused state of survival where you didn't close your eyes with both eyes when you slept and you, you know, constantly looking over your shoulder and just ready for the worst to happen. Was it, was it easier? Did some of that ease when you got into the foster system? Because you said you didn't have like the abusive parents, but you know what I'm saying? Like, did you start then like being less hyper vigilant? And <laughs> well, make no mistake about it, Tammy. Like I said, that I it, I chose the the lesser of the evil, if you will. Being out on the street, having to sleep with you know both eyes open as opposed to being on the inside, you know, dealing with different personalities. You know, mind you, you dealing with thousands, if not millions, of kids coming through the system, and they've gone through some things. They've you know, experience life just like me. And uh, there were times where I was, you know, put in situations, not with the foster parents, but it was just necessarily with me, it was with the foster kids. And at times you would have to deal with like how normal kids go through with the bullying. Uh, I did have a foster parent who was one of those that liked to pit the kids against each other and make them fight. And at one point uh, she had like 15 girls in one house. And I uh, think like, seven or eight of them ganged up on me and I had to fight. I just, I, people wouldn't believe it, but coming up, I had to fight a lot. And that's just what it was. So it wasn't any much better. It just, I seen a different side of it, what my life would be if I were to go to college. And that was my main point of staying in foster care. I could have come up, came home at any time, <laughs> right. but I made that choice to stay in. And at, at my, let's say this, um, after a certain point, I think I, when I was 16, I was able to go home and spend time with my family and my mother and my father and everybody and, and just, you know, work on mending the relationship that, you know, things that happened prior. And so it wasn't like when I aged out, I had an estranged relationship with my family. I was still in contact with 
Uh, that's um, which in itself is amazing and that's yeah yeah, that that in itself is amazing because so many times you just see these families just you know for whatever reason and just the fact that you guys were able to reunite and re-get back together and i don't want to say let bygones be bygones because that never you never forget still needed to be uh, hammered out but yeah you still need to deal with all that yeah Yeah, as as a believer in christ i'm not a, a religious person but i do believe in a high power power and I just believe in, you know, if you want God to bless you, you can't hold on to all that bad that happened in life. I wouldn't have been able to travel to 50 plus countries had I still hold grudges or, you know, what happened to me and, and what that person did to me, those kids being mean to me in high school. I wouldn't have been able to do this. So there's power. I will say this when it comes to healing, this is what I've learned from going to, you know, therapy and, and healing myself from the past. For one, you become self aware. And when you become self-aware of yourself and others around you and your surroundings around you, you begin to find your voice. And mm-hmm. when you find your voice, you're able to speak up and speak out on things that you're willing to put up with and what you won't put up with. And then third, that's where you then begin to officially set boundaries and to where, you know, who you want in your life, who you don't want, what you're willing to pull up with and what you're willing to not put up with. And so once you have those in place and everything else, I feel, it falls, you know, in place afterwards. And so, and again, uh, going to therapy or, or getting your mental health in check, uh, you have to realize it's not an overnight thing. It's not a one quick fix. Uh, it's just like when you decide to get your physical house in order and, 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 and work on yourself physically and lose weight, and you give up all the junk food. Once you start, you can't stop and you, you can't go back to it because it's, it'll, be, it'll be worse off. And so when you go to therapy or you do whatever it is to get your mental health in check, once you start, you cannot stop. So, for instance, if you go to therapy, you can't have that mindset. Oh, I'm going to go sit on this couch. I'm going to go talk to this person for an hour. I'm going to talk about my whole life and everything is going to be that. And once I'm done, they're going to give me the vibe I need and I'll be fit. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> healing is a lifelong, ju- it's it's a lifelong, lifelong journey. journey and it's not a commitment. Once you start, you cannot stop. And I often recommend people who do therapy, if you, like I said, those who can't afford it, uh, they're Four months a year, you can break it up quarterly. Go four times a year. You know, every three months, you can go talk with a therapist. That's what I do. And then find, you know, hobbies to keep you busy. You know, getting your physical house in order. That's what I'm working on now. During the pandemic or before the pandemic, I had lost over 100 pounds and then gained it back and then some. And so now I'm working on, you know, getting back into the gym. And congratulations. Busy. Oh. Busy. That was a while back. That was a while back. That's over with now. Like, congratulations back. anyway. That's some inspiration right there because not yeah. many people can say they lost 100 pounds. I, I hate looking at those back then pictures, man, because it just, it makes me sad, but it gets me motivated. And and again, like I said, with, with getting my mental health in check, it opened up so many doors for me. It led me to writing a book. It led me to getting my business started. Uh, this, of course, came with being stuck in the house during a pandemic and couldn't travel anymore. Uh, and so I had nothing else to do. And then, you know, George Floyd happened, so that incident happened. And so I had nothing else to do. I started writing a book called What If of a Controversial Paradigm Shift. And afterwards, um, not knowing what I was doing, just doing something, uh, talked with a lawyer and we had a conversation to which said, she asked me the question, what's the name of your business? And I kept telling her the name of my book. And she was like, well, I don't think you understand, you know, if you're selling a product to the public, you're going to have to have a, a, a limited liability cover, LLC. And so one thing about life, no matter how many, you know, degrees or not that you have on your belt and experience and you've done this and that, you're never too old to keep learning and growing. And never, so never, never. I got a PhD that doesn't make me better than the next person. I still got things I need to learn. Absolutely. So what I have to do with this is keep hit the ground running. And that's where Third Eye Entertainment LLC was born. And again, my business, Third Eye, is a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. And, and a part of our business, again, is with the service of bringing social awareness. And we talk about topics such as foster care, homelessness, uh, injustice, uh, domestic abuse, child sex trafficking, mental health issues, even LGBTQ issues, et cetera. So you cover about- it all. So great, and I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. I know, you know, we've been on here a little bit and I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but tell people 
the easiest way to get hold of you. Now you've mentioned a book, you've mentioned a business, you've mentioned oh, all okay, kinds sure. of stuff, which I'm like, oh, I didn't know you had a book. Like, I'm like, now I got to go check it out. So I'm yeah. super excited about that. So tell us the easiest and quickest way to get hold of you if somebody wants to contact you. So the easiest way is to my website, differentworld.net. Again, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. You can check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram, TikTok, and my YouTube channel, which I like to drive most of the traffic to. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, uh, as well as my email address. It's really long. So you just go to my website, differentworld.net. Yeah. And I'll put all of your links in the show notes and in the in the comments. I'll put everything there so everybody can just click and get to you right away. I just wanted to, you know, the quickest way then is your website. Just go right there. Yep. And um, that'll that link will definitely be there. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, of course, definitely. You can just click on my link, especially with my YouTube channel. That's why I like to drive the traffic to my YouTube channel. Okay. If you click on it and you'll see all my travel videos. I think I just posted my one to Cuba. I did Paris last week. Oh, Egypt have Nairobi Kenya I got so many so just go look oh that would be fun yeah no absolutely <laughs> world traveler yes world yes. traveler I don't just do travel I talk about motivational speaking as well uh I do pop culture reviews as well as social awareness and so again I'm, I'm more than just an option so come and learn about me absolutely uh, so definitely and also want to take this time to thank you Tammy for having me on your podcast I truly appreciate it and enjoyed my time here um I don't know did you have any other questions for me? No, 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 no. I want you to just, I really appreciate you having here, coming on. And I want you to give one quick words of wisdom. If you could give the people that are listening, you've got people that are in the foster care system, you've got people that were homeless at some point or still are. What's one word of advice you would give them? I would say my motto is manifest, plan, prepare. And let me break that down for that for people so I understand why I say this advice. Manifest is where the part where you remove all the doubt, all the fear, all the naysayers of you can't do this, I won't do this. Remove all that out of your mind. Reprogram your mind to thinking of nothing but positive affirmations of what you can do and what you will do. See it before you receive it or manifest it. Start speaking it into existence. Once you have started and believing in the manifestation, move on to planning, getting it out on paper, putting in the work and the time and the fruitations for well, what it is that you want to manifest and therefore have a backup plan, have an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it is coming. And when it does come, just tell yourself, whatever comes my way, this too shall pass and I will get through it. And so once you move on to the third step, preparation side of it, this is a little deeper and this is where it comes from the internal to the external. That means to get your house in order, order from the inside, outside, meaning fixing your financial house, your physical house, your mental house, your spiritual house, your emotional house, getting rid of people that mean you know well, mending broken bridges. So therefore, whatever it is that you're manifesting and planning for, you will be prepared for it when it comes to you. So therefore, you won't squander it. You will know how to handle it when it does come to you. And that's a lot of what I did in my past. I squandered all the opportunities because I didn't know how to handle it. So the approach that I take to life now is manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is that I want, and it will surely come to me, and I want you guys to do the same. Manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is that you want in life, and it will surely come to you guys. Different as well. Come and learn. Amen. I very, very well said. Remember that, guys. So thank you so much, Different, for coming on, and we will, I'm going to check out all your stuff. We'll have to chat some more. And for those of you listening, three big words, manifest, plan and prepare. And we hope to see you back. Thank you so much. You have a blessed day. You as well. Bye, everybody. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview with the lovely Miss Teddy Vincent of the Adult, excuse me, Adult Child of Dysfunction Thriving at the Chaos Podcast. That's a long title, but I like that title, man, and uh, the message that she brings with the podcast. And, you know, a lot of us adult children um, who have not dealt with a lot of our childhood trauma and, and still being affected by it. And so with her podcast, she talks about it, you know, Encouraging those who still are affected by, you know, their past trauma to be healed by or go get healed from it. And so I definitely had a great time talking with her. You guys be sure to show her some love and support on her uh, website as well as all of her uh, social media platforms for her podcast. I have her link below, so definitely check her out and show her some love. Um, what was unique about this podcast is this was, believe it or not, my first actual podcast. Uh, 
with a, a, a Caucasian woman or a white woman, if you will. And I, I've had a podcast with plenty of, of white men and talking about my book, What If Controversial Paradise Shit, but this was the first one talking with it with a, a white woman. And um, it was pretty cool, man. And it just dispelled that notion that, you know, black and whites can't come to that round table and have these conversations that are uncomfortable with what we did. And so uh, with that, and I just I enjoyed the opportunity. Big shout out to Miss Tammy for having me. And again, you guys definitely show her some love and support, uh, as well as if you guys enjoy listening to my audio interview with Miss Tammy, definitely show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and hitting that subscribe button down below, you guys. I definitely appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me. Please keep it coming. As well as you guys, uh, don't forget to check out all my other social media handles, including my TikTok, my Twitter, uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore, Instagram. Uh, but again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and check out your girl's uh, other social media handles, as well as anybody out there looking for motivational speakers, looking for me to be a part of any grassroots conversations, or looking to do collaborations, get at your girl on my website, or you can send me an email, DM, whatever you like. You know, I ain't hard to find. Just come and look for your girl, yeah? As well as, you guys, don't forget my book, what if a controversial paradigm shift is available on my website? So again, uh, head there and get a copy of it. And this book again was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice. And uh, again, I've done this through provocative and graphic illustrations. And so again, please be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has some content. So if you can't take this type of heat. You still come to the kitchen. Why? Let's get you a little fire, baby. You'll be all right. That's you know, the point of it all, you guys, to have these conversations that are uncomfortable, people don't like to have, but need to be had. You know, it's my theory and hope that we have these conversations, you know, open and honestly and constantly that over time we can create systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. So, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Yeah. As well as you guys, don't forget, um, what else we got going on in Difference World? Let's see. Um, tomorrow's Thursday. I was going to drop my um, my movie review, but I think I'll push that back. As well as, you know, last week we were we'll back this one. I dropped, finally dropped my travel video to Cuba. I hope you guys are enjoying that. Uh, and if you haven't got a chance to, definitely check that out. Um, so again, that's why you guys gotta hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so moving on, uh, let's do our mental health check before we get out of here. Uh, again, for anybody that may be going through any type of mental anguish, uh, be it depression, anxiety attacks, having suicidal thoughts, even dealing with bullying or a drug relapse. I want you guys to know and understand that it's okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. Be it talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, cutting people off, mending broken bridges. Even after getting on medication, this is what's best for you. Do it. Again, uh, find whatever works best for you to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is... 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741 or for those that would prefer to go online you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org and for those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching the girls YouTube channel you guys can check out InCounseling.com. Again, InCounseling is spelled E N C O U N S E L I N G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, you have to remember that it's on you to do your own research and find what works best for you because at the end of the day, you are the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, not anybody else. And lastly, when it comes to mental health, you guys, I want you to remember whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time of your life, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not worth it. It's not an option. So therefore, don't do it. Okay? 
So we got that out the way, you guys. We're gonna move on <clears throat> and close out uh, this vlog on a more positive note and making sure you guys again uh, check out uh, if you haven't had a chance to all my other vlogs. I'm um, just dropping them back to back to back. 2024 about to be an amazing year. We're closing out 2023 uh, on a good note and a positive note. And so again, you guys, uh, appreciate all the love and support. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button for me, that notification bell so when I drop content. You guys come into different world when we come and learn. Uh, as well as you guys, don't forget whatever it is in life that you believe that you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then when it comes to you guys, different world we come and learn. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.